You know, as we talk about Naomi Osaka, you know, we'll take a mental health break from from folks asking her questions about, you know, everything except for tennis, essentially, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, right. I think Venus Williams summed it up nicely, though. She said, I take what they say, and I look at them, and none of them can beat me. They can't yeah. hold a candle to me on the tennis court. Yeah. I really don't but, care I also think, but I also think it shows the different generations, right? Like, Venus is our generation, and we were right. taught to grit it out, suck it up, not talk about it. And I think for Osaka, like, her generation, mental health is discussed. Yeah, and I, I think that that is so amazing to me that she can make that choice and normalize this conversation yeah. because it's, it's a completely different world. Yeah. I, I couldn't help but notice a parallel. Uh, a parallel that Naomi Osaka, within the span of a year, is, a, is the second Black woman who was expected to grin and bear it for a very European traditional thing that she just pieced out of. Because Meghan Markle, this reminds me so much of Meghan Markle, and I would argue that that's also a mental health thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that Meghan Markle is, is in this environment, and they expect her, and they expect, in a way, they expect more of both of these women because they're Black women. I mean, to, because I think with both of them, uh, you can't, uh, I think a racial component is unavoidable, uh, especially with Meghan Markle. But, but yeah, I think that it's interesting that within the span of a year, we had seen two prominent black women like make these mental health decisions that they're getting criticized for, but I think were the right move in both cases. Yeah. 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 It's hard for me too. I'm you know, as as, as a, a wannabe athlete, I guess I am now. Um I look that- at how how they abused Naomi Naomi Osaka now versus just sixteen months ago when like, oh my god, she's so different than Serena, she's so calm, she accepts her victories, doesn't yell, doesn't scream, and now you hate her because she says I need to take a break because right. y'all me out. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> what she, do you want to be? <laughs> she's so good at dealing with our shit. And then they're right. mad at her because she says, I don't want to deal with this shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, and we're talking about tennis. Really, media generally, we know. Yeah. But when we talk about tennis, like this is specific, it's dominated the by white men, right? So there I I was watching Jamel Hill. She was on Joy Reid's show. And she was talking about uh, some of the questions that, you know, Black, that Venus, Serena, Naomi Osaka got. She was like, after, uh, you know, Serena was, her rival was Maria Sharapova. And like, she like, a rival okay. in the, every year. Like, famous, so like, Serena would just beat her, like, up and down the court every time. And after beating her, one of the questions after the match was, are you intimidated by Mar- Maria Sharapova's looks? And it was like a white dude just asked me, he was like, I just beat her in straight sets and you're asking about looks. It's so bad. Yeah. Right. right. Another part of this, which I think is interesting and which I, why I love the support that she's getting from athletes all around and particularly the Williams sisters who we know have gone through can relate with her. That US Open, right? Where everybody wanted Serena to win against Osaka and Osaka was being booed and she was cried like, that has a whole different look to it now that now sure. that we know she deals with anxiety and depression and stuff like that. Absolutely. I, like, I wanted to just read this. That was why I was looking down because the poet Cheyenne Tyler Jacobs wrote, unfortunately, the black the blood of black women is only seen when it is being shed to elevate others. Her blood has been given as a sacrifice and she has been raised to take pain quietly God forbid she disturbs you while you're eating. And if she dares shed that tear, you'll remind her that she might just wear a crown, but she will never praise her as a queen. Wow. Right. Absolutely. That's powerful. That's wonderful. I would also like, I would also suggest for context, anybody who's not old like me, 
to go on YouTube and look up a tennis player named John McEnroe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a white male tennis player who routinely flips out yes. on everyone around him on everyone. the court <laughs> and he got commercials he got There's commercials right. making fun mm -hmm. he got endorsements he got to get paid yeah. off we'll of paid his persona of flipping out the there. very thing <laughs> And yeah. there's also, and by contrast, there is a cartoon that got a, a comic strip that got a lot of traction where it was basically a racist caricature of Serena Williams jumping Absolutely. up and down and yeah. having a hissy fit. He gets to get paid off of his belligerent persona, but she gets lambasted for it. Just, awesome. just to add a little bit of context. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's the it's it's no different than uh, who's the Fox News broadcaster that told LeBron James to, to shut up and Laura dribble. Ingram. There you go. Who? Laura Ingram. She's uh, oh yeah. LeBron, yeah. Shut up and dribble. Yeah, shut up and dribble. Meanwhile, he went out and won a championship that same season. But yeah, you know, that's another story for another day. <laughs> He's like, I most certainly will not just shut up and dribble. And dribble All right. Exactly. You know, and Laura and, with the fake slow Nazi salute that turned into a wave. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's how he was like, what? Or, or, the, or the terrorist fist jab with Michelle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all of it, man. Yeah, because because we all know ISIS is going around fist jabbing each other. Like yeah. that didn't even make yeah. it. It's it it it's it's crazy, right? You know, the fact that 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 we can have this space and talk to each other. And we can't have these conversations with white folks. So the first thing they think is we're being racist. No, you're just being called out on your shit and you're not used yeah. to it. <laughs> Why are you so divisive? Like we well, should be unified. I can't I can't help thinking about sort of Bila when you talked about Meghan Markle and just like the whole system of the royal family and that that whole just culture. Yes. Um like even in the work that I do, it is aligned. And so the expectations for us are so much higher. And when we you know, like what I always struggle with is how we are tasked with holding everyone up, making sure that we're okay, that we must stay calm, we cannot get emotional. And then I see our counterparts break down over the simplest things and, <laughs> and, and act like, you know, literal damsels in distress because, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Right. And when you don't do that, then it's like, it's, it's always what we're not, right? Like, it's like, yes. you know, you have an opinion, you're too aggressive. You are calm, you're too cold, right? And then there are the layers of gender and race, right? As a woman, like, be assertive, yes. but not too assertive, right? Be black, don't be too, too black. Because right. that's to, to put yeah. that in perspective, Meghan Markle was expected to deal with things that, Princess Diana literally died running died away from. from. Yeah. yeah. Like she was, she was literally running from like the paparazzi and everything right. when she died. But and I would also add to that for like the ro royal families, there is also a belief, and she entered into a culture and a society where truly from protocol, they never have to admit that they're wrong. Yeah. So they never apologize. You know, you're told they will never tell you that they're wrong. Um, it must be your mistake. Well, they're, <laughs> like, they're, they're you are a commoner. Like, right? you will <laughs> never go back and forth. And and even if, you know, they spell cat, K-A-T, it's like, looks like it's cat. Yeah. Yeah, this is very true. It's funny that you, you guys would talk about Meghan Markle and related to Naomi Osaka because... Uh, Pierce Morgan related to both of them also. Uh, I, not, I hate not in the glowing terms that you guys did, though. He basically said Naomi Osaka was, he called her soft or whatever and called the mental Isn't health. He, thing he be Isn't this the motherfucker that walked off? Right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> that's oh him. I can't do guys. I can't. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's him. Yes, he not only said that they, they were soft, uh, he said they were faking for sympathy. And when people were like, why, you know, just attacking black women like this is what you do. He, po he went, he posted a picture of him and Serena. <laughs> um, 
I was like, look at this. And then Ozzy Ozzy Burns wife came yeah, out yeah. and said, we're all good friends and, and yeah, everyone had a good time. Picture. I can't be a racist. Yeah, I was like, he went that route. So he got lambasted for that. Um, Can I just ask a general question? Sure. Why are white men so angry? Right? Like, yeah, they are just yeah. angry. So we talked about this before this segment. Oh. The rage has always been given credence in this country. That's what. Yeah, but know. I mean, like they feel like I mean, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in conservative land. Like I really feel like this whole mass and life. Like they really think things are being taken away from them. And I'm like, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. I had one of my neighbors turn to me and tell me, "It's really hard to be white right now." Oh, really? really? And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Now? Like the, the was skewed, the sun out? I'm just kidding. Skewed, uh, <laughs> I don't know the skewed, I guess, scale of racial justice or you know how we're all treated, perceived in this country. It's normal to them, so any slippage is a loss. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like <laughs> I can't say whatever the fuck I want or call. Who, you know, like yeah. it's, it's like their heads are exploding, bro. See, I've got to compete with this woman, with this with this non-white person. I'm supposed to get that job. Right. Uh, we talked about keeping these these uh the segments separate, but we may as well combine them now with the question that Nicole asked about why uh why white men are so angry. In addition to what Naomi Osaka and Piers Morgan relating it to Megan Markle, we're out of we're almost out of the pandemic now to the point where sports teams are we're having uh fans in uh stands. I went to the Orioles game a couple weeks ago with uh Friend with Mike Shu Nicole, we had a great time. Got drunk. Was like, oh, we're back at the stadium, man. So the NBA playoffs are going on, and we got fans throwing popcorn at one fan in Philadelphia. Threw popcorn at Russell Westbrook. Another fan in New York spit on Trey Young. Another mm-hmm. fan in Oklahoma City uh, just racially berated Ja Morant's parents. Uh, that was you talk. Wasn't it? Utah, excuse Utah. me, yeah. yeah. Where it was, yeah, Utah, where I think he said he put a nickel in his back and watched the boy dance. I think that was something along the lines of what they say. And I'm yeah. missing one, right? What's the one I'm missing? Oh, Kyrie in Boston, right? He had a water bottle thrown at him. This right. is this is after he said, I'm all, basically, I'm all good with the bull, bull and the jeering. Can we keep the racism down like right Boston was like no we can't keep the racism down yeah they uh, were like have we met <laughs> yeah, <Boston. right? laughs> so i think there is some relation there like and molly kerm on first take she pointed out she was like and i mean she was mad obviously she's married to jalen rose who's ex-athlete probably talked to him she was like why is it always white men <laughs> What like that are doing these things? It was a white man in Philadelphia. It was a white man in Boston. It was white men in Utah. Out. Yeah, and it was uh, who am I missing? And it was a white man that spit on Trey Young. I mean, <laughs> granted, you have to during the pandemic when the NBA was going on in the bubble, these blacks were getting quite uppity. So yeah. <laughs> it's understandable, right? They gotta knock them down, knock them. But we're yeah. back now, so like. Yeah, we're back, back, to, where they back to normal. <laughs> so I think that we are, so we're living in a country where the first black president roasted Donald Trump at the yes, White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes, he did. And he got back at him by getting his job and trying to undo everything he did. So <laughs> there's a sense yeah. of entitlement. There's this unspoken and sometimes even subconscious feeling that all of this is for me. Yeah. And yeah. you are someone that I allow here. That's what that's what the sixth was about, the storming of the Capitol. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. about like there was a there was a BLM protest near the Capitol and the National Guard were there when they got there. Yeah. <laughs> like there's this unspoken and it's catered to is this unspoken subconscious understanding that all of this is for me well that's mm-hmm. why the white mass the white the white people who, who who kill black people and commit these heinous uh mass shootings get cheeseburgers 
Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we get yeah. the working end of a gun when we tell the cops that, oh, I'm armed. Yeah. Oh, bang, you yeah. die. Yeah. Right, right. And then when we ask you, I mean, white, white supremacy, you tell us what, what, what about Antifa? So, right. Yeah. Their, with, uh, <laughs> so, white rage and domestic terrorism is what fueled their rise. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's like they're the foot soldiers. They're not gonna you know, like punish but them. Like, Dylan, get a cheeseburger, Dylan. You did your fucking job. We'll take care of you from here. You know, it won't be too bad. You know, it's the same. It's the same deal. So but I would make the argument that our country is based on domestic terrorism. That yeah, is our history, right? Yeah, that's what domestic terrorism, religion, and tobacco. So right. one one thing right. I one guns. thing I I, I guns. Referred, Let's uh -huh. forget the guns. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> one thing I refer to it as is main character syndrome. Uh -huh. So when you read a book, even if the person is villainous, if they're the main character, there is a sort of subconscious empathy that the reader can have with the main character of the book, even if they're a terrible person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how our country deals with basically terrible white people. Like Dylan Roof, the reason he got a, a cheeseburger is main character syndrome there is a sort of there's a sort of subconscious empathy that if someone if you're the majority and the other people don't look like you they're side characters yeah and isn't there also like a part of like and a but to that because what i found really interesting is like the cognitive dissonance but it's like oh they're not all that bad but if only right? But if we did this, you know, but the Patriots are really angry, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was, you know, but they weren't that mad. But the, you know, Confederate flag is about our heritage, but it's, but yeah. it's not that racist, you know? Yeah. And then I think about how people would talk about Trump and this is, I'm very sensitive to this because I'm in Trump land, you know, uh -huh. and it's like, but he says some things that, you know, I really don't agree with, but he's not that bad. Yeah. And I'm like, what does it actually take at this point? Like, <laughs> right. re like yeah, really like the, tell me what it's going to take. For yeah, you. Moral ambiguity and the cognitive, cognitive dissonance is like mind blowing. You yeah. like. <laughs> it is. Right. You know, yeah, it, like, but his policies, what policies? You know, in the argument that I hear. But, but, he, speak, but he speaks for us, right? right? Because he's just like us. Um, you know, he's not a politician. <laughs> he didn't do shit. All he had to do was tear Obama shit down and that's enough for them. That was a nice I mean, This was the first no. job he ever had. Yeah. This is the part that I'm like, this was the worst thing for a narcissist. You could work with your family your whole life. No one will tell you no. And then you chose to be president? Yeah. Forget all that. You picked the most un below average mediocre some of a bitch that the world has. <laughs> That's the best we had? Yeah. Like, I was That's part of it though, right? It's like his superpower is his lack of shame. He has yeah. no bottom. He has no shame yeah. like most most people like, do. Like, he, he, I, I, I literally, I, uh, hey, there's a, a, a guy, black guy that I met in December of last year. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> that entire paycheck in December. Right. December is after the election. You said he ended up paying you, right? That that Donald Trump would not lose. No, he bet that Joe Biden would never go to the White House in yeah. December. He was like a QAnon. He was a QAnon. He was a QAnon. I don't even get started yeah. with that. But hold on. Yeah. But hold on. Oh my God. January 6th happened, right? Uh -huh. it's happening. He ain't going to make it in there. I said, dog, I'm going to let you out right now. You give me 2500 right now. Let's out. Nope. Because he's going to knock him out. Okay. The next morning after the election, he said, I guess you won. And that day, he sent me my money. Yeah. Right? Good for him. I ain't heard of it. You were like, look at this but guy. But you made 2500 so it looks like a win. No, 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 no. I tried to let him out for 2500 He paid the Wow. Guy. Yeah. He was like, that guy was like a QAnon guy, though. Yeah. Like, Very he was, nice. He was Very nice. stuff. Every, every week it was something else. Like, yo, you're complete. I had to tell him, like, yo, you've been radicalized. He was a Marine. Yeah. Like, 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 he had embassy duty. He was an embassy duty Marine. Yeah. I was like, damn, dog. You've been back. You've been when did you get radicalized? How did it happen? I'm going to stop recording. Um, not to be.